of a Jew In the eyes of a peasant Refugee child In an age of oppression Creeping across the state line Living on the bread line Somehow growing up Like a flower in the desert The martial law, jackboot justice, one of the poor, one of the hungry. Now look at the rejects, mocked by the elite, political dissidents, men of greed. been there before anything you feel you felt more anyway you walk it's been there before anything you feel you felt more anyway you walk Without a lawyer, accused by liars, abandoned by justice, convicted by a riot, offered as a scapegoat, a sentence without evidence, betrayed by a close friend, silenced for convenience. Anyway, you walk. He's been there before Anything you feel You felt more Any way you walk He's been there before He's been there before Anything you feel Anything you feel You felt more Any way you walk Accused by liars, abandoned by justice, convicted by riots, offered as a scapegoat, a sentence without evidence, betrayed by a close friend, silenced for convenience. Anyway, you walk, here we go, he's been there before. Anything you feel, anything you feel, he felt more, he felt more, anyway you walk, anyway you walk, he's been there before, anything you feel, he felt more. Good morning. Good morning. It's lovely to see you and welcome if it's your first time here or you're coming back. It's great to see you. I'm Reverend Austin and you are very welcome. If you're wondering what all these figures are on the front here, um, that's reminding us that there are more people watching online at home, um, on Facebook and during the week on YouTube. And so uh, we are a stronger number than we are here in church today and we're pretty strong in church today and um, and so that is a lovely thought um the song that we heard this morning a graham kendrick song talking about um who's who should we be thinking about not just the important people but the people who are suffering too and jesus knows what it's like and we ask that question in our service today. Who's the most important? Um, I'm not going to ask that question at all uh, in this, at this moment. You just think about it. Who's the most important? Our notices. Uh, today is our Holy Communion. And we've got Junior Church today. Hey. So um, the children will be going out um, uh, after we've said a prayer. Um, 
after we've had some, some singing, some time together, and, uh, and they will be going out with Jenny into the hall and doing some activities. And I think, are there, are there prizes today? Oh, there aren't any prizes today. And can I just say that when we do go out, um, as soon as one as well, if one of the parents would be happy to come out and be my second person, that would be really great, please. Brilliant, thank you. So uh, please do uh, join us. But that doesn't mean that all the adults can go out. You've got to sit through my sermon. (laughs) And so we also have refreshments after this service. And at 1pm we have a baptism, um, and so we'll be uh, praying for Raymond and, and his family. And 6pm tonight for uh, 10 to 14 year olds, we have Digging Deeper. It's a, um, a chance to look into the Bible stories that are meaningful to us uh, as we are growing up. And it is 100% the choice of the young people whether they want to go, not just because parents say, you've got to go along to that, because they've got to take some ownership. Please see our notice sheet for all of our other regular services, uh, including tomorrow, Monday, open church from 9 till 12. Uh, We also have weekday morning prayer and night prayer on Zoom. If you want an invite, please do let me know. Tuesday the 21st at 7pm on Zoom, it's the Men's Bible and Faith Chat group. Um, If you qualify for that, um, then and you'd like to join us on Zoom, ask for a... uh, an invite to that. Saturday the 25th of September um, at 10 a.m. till 12 noon, refreshments are served in the hall. Um, And so Saturday mornings, please do join us, um, certainly for the time being, while we're having uh, teas and coffees and biscuits and sometimes juice and cakes. Um, And so uh, that's 10 till 12 on a Saturday. Uh, You're very welcome. uh, 6 p.m. on that same Saturday, We are showing a film here in church, Um, and um, if you want to know what the film is, I'm not allowed to tell you online, um, because that's advertising, ask me afterwards. Saturday the 30th of October, so that's going a long way um, into advance, we are doing a Bible reading Zoomathon, 12 hours of reading from the New Testament on Zoom in little 15 minute chunks. So we'll be wanting volunteers for reading and it will be a sponsored event. You will see out on the bar out there, there are uh, COVID tests, free COVID tests. If anyone wants to do the lateral flow test, you can take a pack home with you and there's enough to last you for a month doing it twice a week. I have more packs if you want any. The quiz night on Saturday the 2nd of October at 7 p.m. Uh, Rita is going to be um, rugby tackling you um, before you leave the service. Yes, she is. And she has tickets today. And um, it's teams of eight. And it is a £10 a ticket, but there is food involved. Loads of food involved. Loads of food involved. And also, I've just got eight from the church so far, so that's not a good showing. So if we could get another team of eight, I'd be awfully happy. Otherwise, I'll get we're trying to raise as much money for this church as we can. So we need all the support we can. So please, buy a ticket. I've had some donations. Lovely. Thank you. And if you're lucky, I can be on your team. That's not good news. I'm supposed to be advertising it. <laughs> and so we'll just quieten ourselves as we prepare to pray today and to worship God. If the words appear in yellow on our screen, that's for us to all join in. So we pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So if you've got instruments with you, I invite you to stand, put your face mask on if you wish to, uh, to sing, as we're going to sing, uh, Jesus turned our sorrow into a dance. Jesus put this song into our Jesus hearts. Jesus put this song into our hearts. And oh, instruments, yes, anyone who hasn't got them? 
We're going to make a start. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> okay, right, so we are going to make a start. If you haven't got your instrument yet, shake your keys. Good morning. Three, two, one. Next clip. And again. Yeah, that's it. Please stand. of paper that was given to you on the way in. If you haven't got a piece of paper, please put your hand up in the air. Okay, so um, where are those pieces of paper? Who, AJ, you were handing them out? Yeah, over there, behind the door. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Right, so this is, uh, this might not work, uh, it's a game of um, Bible top trumps. To find out who as the most important person um, in the Bible, um, and so uh, uh, through their sort of score cards. I mean, obviously Jesus will win, um, but uh, here we go. So you've got different factors of um, uh, their Bible factor, their courage, their leadership, their love, prayer, self-control, wisdom, and criminal record. Um, and uh, obviously you don't want to score high on the criminal record. Um, but some of them do, because actually uh, Jesus welcomed people also who had had uh, lives that uh, others challenged and said, you shouldn't have lived like that. So here we go. Um, I have got uh, Noah who built the ark. And let's see now. Um, I don't want everyone to be out straight away. So I'm going to go for um, wisdom, which is um, six. So if you have got less than six, okay, put your hand up if your wisdom is less than six. Oh, there's a few people, okay, so I'm afraid now you are out. Oh, oh what a shame. Okay, so everyone else, you had, you had more than six in wisdom, didn't you? Yeah. 
Fantastic. Okay. So um, uh, let's see. Who can we have um, to, um, to, to try and get a score? So who would like to volunteer uh, their high score? Oh, oh. I, no, no, no. We're volunteering ourselves, not other people. Oh, sorry. Okay, yes, yeah, that's the rule. Okay, who would like to volunteer? Okay, fantastic. What is your character? Uh, Abraham. Abraham, and what's your best score? Um, Bible factor. Bible factor. What is Abraham's Bible factor? 27! 27! <laughs> Has anyone got higher than 27? Oh, Sue! <laughs> Has got higher than 27. I wonder who Sue is. So is everyone else out? Yeah. Okay. So Sue. So it's Sue. So, what is your best score? And who is your character? Ah, uh, David. David. Yeah, Israel's greatest king. A Bible factor 28. Bible factor 28. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, okay, so you can't use the Bible factor. Right. Um, uh, but let's see, what is your next best one? Uh, and we'll see if you can beat Courage. Courage. Ten. Ten. What is yours? Six. Six. Oh, so we have Sue, who is our winner. Uh, hey. So... We could have made that last much longer, and I know it possibly will in junior church, um, but all the different people, they all have their own different strengths and their own weaknesses. But, just as I said, if you're, perhaps your self-control was low, it still means that you can live for God, and God can be your strength. If you have a criminal record on there, it doesn't mean that you're the least important. It means that you know you have a need for God. So when we're asking who's the most important person in the Bible, God can work through everyone. And that's an important thing. It's not a matter of winners and losers. In fact, we'll hear what Jesus said about being the most important when we hear the Gospel reading. So we're just going to pray before the children go out to a junior church. We shall pray our theme prayer together. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives' end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the children are going to go out, if they want to go out to junior church, if if there's any young people who would like to stay in, you're very welcome. You'll just be sitting through my sermon. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, we want to go. <laughs> and if there is another grown-up who would like to go out as well, fantastic. Thank you. And I can give you a printout of my sermon, so there's no escape. Oh wow. <laughs> So we know that there are times when we have a wrong opinion of our own importance. Maybe we feel we're more important than others, or maybe we feel we're less important and that we are rubbish. Both extremes are wrong. So we come to God with our time of confession. Lord Jesus, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, 
forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lift our minds above earthly things. Set them on things above and show us your glory and your power that we may serve you gladly all our days. Amen. And may almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. We have our first reading brought to us by Steve. And Steve, if you'd like to come up and read from here. Thank you. The first reading is from the book of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that works are done with gentleness and wisdom, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If we wish to remain seated and sing this song as a prayer, we have our next song, which is Let There Be Love Shared Among Us. <coughs> Oh. 
I invite Steve to come back and uh, do our gospel reading for us. Thank you. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be the first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Thank you, Steve. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord, our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something called the Markan Secret. Okay, but you're not allowed to tell anyone else. Okay, right. No one on Facebook, right? That Mark and Secret is particularly seen in the Gospel of Guess Who? Mark. Uh, where Jesus heals people or teaches them, and then Jesus tells them not to tell anyone else about, about what has happened to them or what they've heard. And I always think that this is very strange. Because surely Jesus would want to know, uh, want people to know about the amazing love of God and what God's Son could do. But no, it has to be secret until the right time. Uh, it would very rarely remain a secret because people were so excited about what had happened and what they'd heard and Jesus had done that they would tell everyone in the village and it would spread. They probably got a bit of reflected glory and celebrity status for themselves too. Um, well, you see, I like to tell people that um, I went to school with Paula Radcliffe, the Olympian and marathon runner. Yes, although I have never willingly run in my life. Uh, I also showed David Bellamy around my school, rubs you through the undergrowth, that kind of David with his big beard, um, although I've not really done that much for the environment, really. Oh, yes, and I, okay, just remember this, I am Lord Austin of Glen Cairn, um, because a Apparently, I became a lord uh, through um, a purchase of a bottle of whisky and a piece of land in Scotland. Uh, I think it's a square foot, so I'm going to build a very tall tower. Um, and, and also, right, not only am I a lord, but um, I own land on the moon. Yeah, I do. Ooh. Um, it, and it has um, rights, mining rights to 16 kilometres beneath the surface. Um, and it's near the Sea of Serenity, if you're ever passing by. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, I can only take claim of that if I build an habitable uh, residence. So, um, yeah, don't hold your breath, although you might have to on the moon. Um, yes, these things can be conversation starters about our importance, uh, but they can also get in the way, and people can think, what a wally. <laughs> But the problem for Jesus was that 
when people heard what he had done and heard that he was on his way, people prevented him from doing what he set out to do because there were too many people wanting a bit of his celebrity. Um, it became cheap entertainment when really an encounter with Jesus was supposed to be life-changing, not just an autograph. The most amazing miracles often happened in communities of people who didn't recognise Jesus because they were in a foreign territory where Jewish people weren't allowed to go and yet Jesus went there too. Being the well-known leader or the top person can often limit what you do. Even as a vicar, I might do the bigger stuff like leading services um, and doing school assemblies or the big things like weddings or funerals or whatever. And I might be well known, but it's you who are able to have the vital conversations with people that make people feel welcome and cared for throughout the week. Don't just leave it to the vicar. You are important too. Have you ever seen the programme on the television called Undercover Millionaire or Undercover Manager? Some of you are nodding. Now these incredibly rich or powerful people take on a disguise and a basic role in the charity or within their own company. So doing, in so doing, they're able to really see how things run or can spot the sincerity of people without the danger of their money or status getting in the way. People are truly honest or they don't do things just to impress. And maybe this is the very essence of God the big manager, if you want to think of that, becoming human as Jesus and drawing alongside people suffering so that God can experience the suffering that we go through personally. If, knew, if people really truly knew that Jesus was God, maybe there would be all the fear in Jesus' presence that God became human to overcome. God wants a relationship. doesn't want God's status to get in the way. The disciples didn't understand this humility. They wanted to prove themselves. And they were arguing about who was the greatest. And I can imagine Andrew uh, saying, Well, I saw him first, and then I came to get you, Peter. And Peter would say, well, I talk most with Jesus and he lets me see him with people like Moses and Elijah in visions. And Matthew would say, well, I've changed the most from when Jesus called me from cheating and tax collecting. And Judas would say, well, Jesus trusts me to look after the money. Where would you be without me? All very macho and alpha male rubbish. It's contagious. Even how we can perhaps pat ourselves on the back and say that we as a church have done more than other churches in surviving lockdowns. Hmm. Well, maybe we have. But our, our, <coughs> our experiences shouldn't be for our own glory. They should be to benefit other churches with encouragement and experience and sharing what we've been blessed with. I wonder if Jesus' earthly dad, Joseph, taught Jesus the importance of humility amongst Jesus' brothers and sisters. See, Joseph was older than Mary and so may have had other children already, one of whom being James who we think wrote the letter that we heard first read out, the brother of Jesus, uh, from the letter of James in our first reading. He wrote there that there shouldn't be any selfish ambition or envy, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, 
willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. Can you imagine what a spoilt Jesus would be like? Being brought up as the favourite child, having all his own way and preferential treatment over his, over his siblings. Can you imagine it? It would be horrible. It would be a very different religion. It would be more like wash my feet rather than let me wash your feet. I suppose if Jesus had been treated as fa with favouritism and like the favourite, it would be a bit like the Old Testament story of Joseph and his fine coat and the dreams of being bowed down to by his family. Jesus' formation in childhood and adolescence would have been, been as one with others without arrogance in the knowledge that he was God's son, and yet he didn't need to be arrogant about that. Now, if there's any Harry Potter fans out there, put your hands up. Any Harry Potter fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah one person, two, three. There you go, some admitting to it. The reason why the powerful orphan Harry, as a baby, was sent to be with his uncaring relatives was so that, that Harry, as powerful as he was, would not grow up considering himself better than anyone else or with an attitude of entitlement which he could have so easily got with celebrity status. The disciples all wanted to prove themselves and Jesus taught them that to be the most important you need to be the servant of all and not do anything through the desires of payback. The child Jesus placed Jesus called a child and he placed this child in front of the disciples and the child may not have been able to have even said thank you or in any significant way if anything good was done for that child but Jesus's words saying anyone who welcomes the child welcomes Jesus and also welcomes the one who sent him which brings us back to the undercover manager. Importance of a person shouldn't affect the way that we treat them. Our own importance shouldn't get in the way of us doing what we should. In fact, we, like Jesus, should seek opportunities to serve rather than chances to become important and well-known. Amen. If you feel comfortable to stand, I invite you to stand as we make our affirmation of faith. <coughs> we say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, but by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. I invite you to sit as Lindsay comes and reads our prayers of intercession for us. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers and understanding our true needs. The disciples were arguing about who was the greatest. We pray for places in the world where some people's importance crushes the needs of others. We pray for those who have no one to stand up for them. We pray for anyone bullied at work, at home, at school or in their community. We pray for all, including ourselves, 
who have the opportunity to help others, please help us to know what to do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. The disciples didn't understand what Jesus meant when he told them he had to die, and they were afraid to ask what that he meant. We pray for everyone receiving news which they don't understand or can't take in. We pray for people receiving bad news. Please comfort them with enough support around them. And we pray for the people who give the news. Please give them sensitivity and ability to be understood. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all who are in pain or suffering at this time. We pray that there will be the support they need from their doctors. We also pray for people whose behaviour is leading to suffering for themselves or others. Please help them to stop what is bad for them and find better ways to change how they feel. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we remember all who have died. We thank you. They are now in your love. We pray for all who mourn and we pray that they will come to know the hope of God's eternal love every day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask that these prayers, we ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lindsay. I invite you, if you're comfortable, to stand to stand as we share the peace together. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel. Peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's love and peace in ways that we can at this time. It's lovely to see you. Peace be with you. And also, peace to everyone in Facebook land. Peace be with you. Um, during the next hymn would be when we would traditionally um, be uh, um, taking around the collection bags and things, but uh, at... Um, uh, at the moment, we can't. Uh, soon, we will have card readers, uh, but for people's donations, for refreshments and buying tickets and things like that. But we will still use the envelope scheme and the jar on the bar. At the moment, the jar's not on the bar, the jar's down there. So uh, if people want to give any money to help this church uh, survive and pay all its bills, then you are very welcome. Please support the church in whatever way you can. And as we make those promises in our hearts of to how we will support the church, uh, let us uh, sing our not next song, which is, Will You Come and Follow Me?
please be seated. And some of the children may be coming in during the, the communion prayers, but we make our promises to God about how we choose to live in worship and in offering as we pray. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello. Hello. It's wonderful to see you. Come on in. We're just about to share communion. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin and given him to be born of a woman to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body. Sorry. Turn the page. I was worshipping too much and I lost my place. <laughs> this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink in the, these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as Jesus our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We pray. Jesus, we come to this your table not because we are strong but because we are weak. Not because of any goodness of our own gives us the right to come, but because we need your mercy and your help, not because of anything we have achieved, but because you love us and you died for us. Glory be to you, our living Saviour and Lord. Amen. So if you are new to us uh, here, hopefully you've received a, a pot with a wafer in it, and we are going to receive that together. The body of Christ, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And we have Sue and Teresa handing out the wine. If you wish to receive the wine, then please, uh, if you feel comfortable to stand, uh, then we will know who to bring wine or grape juice to. Thank you. And we will all receive together.
the blood of Christ shed for us all, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And for all those who were unable to receive the bread or wine, if at home or if here in this congregation, a blessing. A blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated as we pray our prayer after communion. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, the children, will the children be coming back in for the, uh, to tell us what they've been doing. This is the point that I've really missed through all the lockdowns because we get to see if they've done colouring in or hear about what they've learned. Um, they might not be allowed to, uh, to be on um, uh, Facebook, um, but we can certainly uh, uh, hear from them off the camera. So we'll find out if they're coming in. If you're here for the first time or haven't been back, please make sure that um, um, you uh, get chance to talk to people. We have refreshments after this service and, um, and we, we would love to get to know you better and hope that you feel at home enough to want to come back again. Oh dear. Just being aware that anywhere on the green um, becomes a place where you can be seen. <laughs> I've got the microphone here. here we go. Right. So in junior church today, we've been doing a similar story to you, okay, or the same story to you, and we started off with some challenges. Who can yell out what was one of the challenges you had to do? Words games. games. So the games. What was among the games? I'll, I'll give you a reminder. What was one of the games? Yeah. Colouring in. So, so? We had to stand on one leg and see who could stand on it for longest. Yeah. <laughs> By the time Jasmine had stood on her one leg for thirty seconds, I said we'd stop there, and all the four older ones managed it for. Th sorry. Sorry, it's getting a bit. I'll get near to the candle. Thank oh, you. Right. Okay. <laughs> well done. All the four older ones managed for 30 seconds, so I said at some point we'll have to have a standoff. Okay, what other challenges did we have? Oh, the other older ones aren't in. Yes, they are. Oh, oh, to Sean. Yeah, to Sean. Balance books on the head. Balance books on the head. That was the weightlifting challenge. But I didn't do it either. Yeah, uh, okay. And then there was one other challenge. What was that one? Oh, yeah, building the tower. Okay, and then we had prizes. We had prizes, as promised. So, yep, yeah. and it wasn't for who could build the highest tower. It wasn't for who could stand on one leg the longest. The twins got a prize each for being the best teamwork. Oh, well done. Um, these two also had a little, but these two also had a prize for being good teamwork. Brilliant. Oh. <laughs> so Sean's just told you that we did build the highest tower. Erin and Blossom were the best demolition gang. Yay! <laughs> well done. The Sean, can you remember what yours was? Uh, oh, brilliant. He, he was brilliant at helping. Yes, thank you. And Eddie was brilliant at trying, weren't you? She oh, was really, yeah. really... Didn't give up at all. She just kept on, kept on, kept on trying. So everyone got a prize, apart from the adults. Oh, <laughs> well done. Thank you so much. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. I've missed that part of the service so much, um, and I'm glad that we can get back to having junior church again. So, we have our final uh, prayer. 
and um, we will be, uh, yes, we've got the hymn first, haven't we? And so we're going to, uh, you shall go out with joy. You need your instruments and your face masks on. So we'll be singing, you shall go out with joy. Please stand. standing for the blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen us to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and all those we love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And please do join us for our um, uh, refreshments in the hall and chance to chat to one another. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. of a Jew, in the eyes of a peasant, refugee child, in an age of oppression, creeping across the state line, living on the bread line, somehow growing up, like a cloud in the desert. Up the martial law, Jack Boot Justice, one of the poor, one of the hungry, number of the rejects, mocked by the elite, political dissidents, men of free. Never before anything you feel, you felt more. Anyway, war has been there before. Anything you feel, you felt more. Convicted by a riot Offered as a scapegoat A sentence without evidence Betrayed by a close friend Silenced for convenience In a way you all He's been there before Anything 